He came, he saw, he conked out. Your hero, my uncle, Red Green! Boy, oh boy, big, big week at the Lodge this week. Got a real special event planned. Our very first ever running of the bulls. <laughs> yeah, we all got a touch of the Pampelona. Yeah, 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 I had that one time. A couple of spoonfuls of modium and keep your running shoes on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, Uncle Red, Pampelona's a city in Spain where they have the real running of the bulls. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, but ours will be just as good, Harold. Boy, I'll tell you. The idea of a bunch of bulls chasing our guys down the main street's got everybody pretty revved up around here. <laughs> you know, it, it sounds pretty dangerous to me. You know, if anybody gets hurt, your name is Mud. Harold, when I'm being chased by an angry bull, I'll take any name but Gord. <laughs> clips from uh, this episode. Harold tells me this is what the big shows do now, you know, to get you to watch, kind of a preview, kind of a teaser thing. How do you like it? Let us know. Just call 1-800-NICE-TRY. Well, got an hour to go till the test run of the running of the bulls. I guess you could call that the test running of the bulls. <laughs> Uncle Red, have you thought this through? How do you mean? Nothing, never mind, stupid question. Yeah. Well, uh, we got our two bulls and they're ready to go, so all we gotta do is throw on our running shoes and start yelling oy vey. I think you mean ole. No, they, uh, these bulls are kosher. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, they're big, you know, and uh, boy, they're, they're mean looking, Harold, and I don't think they've been on a date for a while. <laughs> uh, if you know what I mean, and I'm sure you do. <laughs> Uncle Red, you're just gonna get so terribly hurt. Do you actually think you can outrun an angry charging bull? I don't have to, Harold. All I have to do is outrun at least one lodge member. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about me. I think you should worry about old man Cedric. <laughs> or Buster Hatfield. Oh yeah, he's no Donovan Bailey. <laughs> More like Beetle Bailey. <laughs> And for sure, I can outrun you, Harold. I'm not participating. This is a potentially dangerous event. I know it's not as fulfilling as sitting at the computer for six hours on the internet arguing about whether Captain Kirk is better than Captain Picard. Picard. <laughs> Picard, 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 Picard is. All right, but for the guys that are running with the bulls, Harold, this is a display of courage, manhood, and heart. And heart attacks. <laughs> Oh, your kite got caught in the high-tension wire. You thought you could get it down. So you leaned your ladder up against the pole, and you heard a funny sound. You climbed and climbed way up to the top where the ladder touched the transformer. You grabbed the wire to free your kite, and you noticed your hand getting warmer. Oh, sparks flew out, and away you went with one arm noticeably enlarged. Now, normally, the cops would make an arrest, but they could see you'd already been charged. <laughs> Got a real complicated uh, handyman project on this week's show. As you can see, this vehicle here has had a little unscheduled body work on her, and she's kind of <laughs> unsafe and ugly right now, which is a lot more acceptable in a person than it is in a car. <laughs> And over here, if you'll see, we got almost uh, the identical unit over here and a uh, different side done on this one. This is actually a result of a little test. We ran up to see uh, if Mercury Creek Bridge was wide enough for two cars. <laughs> I can't really talk anymore about that flat for the inquest. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to show you what the creative handyman does when he's got two identical side swipe vehicles. Actually, I got the idea of watching one of them action movies. I really like the action movies because at my age, that's about all the action I'm going to see. I'm going to show you. How to make a Hummer. You know what a Hummer is? It's one of those things they use like on, on Desert Storm. I don't know why they call it a Hummer, but if you got anything that's uh, 12 feet wide, it's a Hummer, believe me. And you know who has them? It's the military and Hollywood celebrities. So that makes sense, because those are two groups that really spend money wisely. Okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to connect
connect these two cars together side by side. And of course, the first thing we have to do is get the doors off them. At a half inch pole. No, I think she's a 5 eighths. are side by side. There we go. Now, just gotta kinda join them together into one wide body. And of course, uh, joining them up means that, you know, you gotta be welding or, or better still, or at least faster still, use the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. But don't uh, skimp on the duct tape, you know, just to, to save a buck or two. Because at highway speeds, you'll be glad that you spent the big dollar. I wonder how much cost so much. It's all the duct tape. You're probably wondering how's this going to work. Well, I'm going to tell you. First of all, you start off this unit. You leave her in neutral. Saves gas. Eh? What about steering? You're thinking. Don't worry about it. I duct tape the front wheels together. This is not just a Hummer. This is a Hummer Dinger. Seats ten. Got two separate heaters. Two separate radios, so you don't get into the arguments over which station you're listening to. Well, anybody can have a stretch limo. We got a squat limo. I didn't stretch the budget. I didn't pay squat. Let's see how she handles. Remember, the women don't find you handsome. You should at least find you handy. I'll be back. To talk to you couples out there who may be a little bit confused as to why relationships are so difficult. You know, um, they say it's bad to generalize, but it's something I really enjoy. <laughs> so so here, here's the thing, okay? Men are interested in cars, women are interested in gardening. Huh? Yeah, think about that, eh? I mean, not all men like cars, some like motorcycles and trucks. But you gotta admit, you see more men at car shows than you see more women at gardening shows. Okay? That's important. That'll help you understand why they see relationships differently. See, because women see a relationship like a garden. You know, you gotta put a lot of work into it. You gotta fuss over it. You gotta turn over the ground, add more flowers, a little fertilizer. Whereas men see a relationship like a car. Once they've made a commitment to have one, they really expect it to go at least five years without any serious maintenance. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, uh, women enjoy working on a relationship. They see that as part of the fun. Men see that as a sign that there's some serious mechanical problem. <laughs> and maybe that's why when there is a serious problem, women try to dig down deeper and get to the roots. Whereas, unfortunately, a lot of men try to trade up. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> you take a simple idea, like a couple of bulls chasing people down the main street, <laughs> and you think to yourself, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Interesting girls, do you hear? I'm not dressed like this to impress girls. Well, it's working, believe me. I'm gonna be officiating the big event, the running of the bulls. No, Harold, it's not gonna be a running of the bulls. We, we had a few problems. What kind of problems? Well, during the test run, uh, we found out that Junior Singleton's starter pistol is not a starter pistol. <laughs> 
So right away, we're down to one bolt. <laughs> and, uh, we got her going, though, with the one bull, and it was chasing everybody pretty good. And then uh, Moose Thompson decided he wanted to double back for his lucky hat. He, went, he ran straight into the bull? No, no, he, he cut around the side street there, but he still nailed the bull pretty good. Oh, yeah. like, like, like head on? More of a T-bone. Uh, actually, 40 T-bones, a monster rump roast, and 900 pounds of hamburger. Oh, I, oh that's awful. A little, yeah. Poor little big bull. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, good. There's an upside. There's an upside. Yeah. This whole silly event has to be canceled. No, 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 no. We're not going to cancel it. We're just going to find something else to run. That's all. We're going to have the running of the moose. I'm going to go tell Moose about it right now. He'll be conscious by now. How can you tell? I'll tell him you said that, Harold. Don't! Don't tell him I said oh, it! Yeah. Welcome to the expert portion of the show, where we examine those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know! <laughs> Excellent. Okay. <laughs> On this week's portion of the experts, um, we have joining my uncle Red is his best friend in the whole wide room, Mr. Hap Shaughnessy! <laughs> This week's letter goes as follows. Um, dear expert. Aww. Some people believe in life after death and some people don't. Who's right? I've seen your show and I figure you guys must know what happens after you die. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody in their right mind can answer that question. I can. <laughs> You died, Mr. Shaughnessy? When did that happen? At the uh, Seoul Olympics in 88. <laughs> I ran the marathon representing the nation of Sierra Leone. During the marathon, I died of a heart attack at the 52-mile mark. <laughs> Marathons are only 26 miles. No one told me that. <laughs> I thought you had to run there and back. So just as I reached what I thought was the finish line, which turned out to be the starting line again, I collapsed of a heart attack and I died. Well, I say we have a funeral immediately. Anyway, my spirit, or my soul, or whatever you want to call it, was floating. I could see I was lying there. Oh, Hap, everybody can see you're lying there. <laughs> I remember a beautiful woman, and I was working on some pottery, and I, I remember a door and a penny sliding on the door, and that's all I remember about the afterlife. Then a doctor revived me, and I was back on Earth, in Korea. <laughs> I was so excited, I treated everyone to a banquet of dog. That's a, that's a Korean delicacy. It tastes a lot like wolf. <laughs> just, just going back a bit to the, your uh, memories of afterlife, uh -huh. you know, uh, that, that pretty woman with the pottery, oh, yeah. and then, then there's that bit about the, the penny and the door. Yeah. yeah, those are both scenes out of the movie Ghost. I was a technical advisor on that movie. Because oh. they wanted it, because they wanted it to be accurate. So in answer to this letter, I would say yes, there is an afterlife waiting for us, and it's full. Yeah, unfortunately, the afterlife is full of the same stuff this one is. <laughs> Got a little camping trip on uh, this week's adventure with Bill. How you doing there, Bill? Oh, you're fine. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, we like to get out in the outdoors or get a little exercise, you know, it's good for you. I enjoy the backpacking myself. Anyway, Bill kind of picked out a spot there and uh, I just thought to, I'd thin out the forest a little bit. And I didn't realize, unfortunately, that I, I put that tree right between Bill's legs. It just happened all that off and up at the lodge. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, back up, oh, back her up. You know, uh, camping is a very personal thing, and you can know a lot about a camper by what they carry in their backpack. I kind of go light, and Bill, he goes, <laughs> he goes cable. <laughs> anyway, we've got all our stuff out there, and uh, it's time to roll out the bed rolls. Oh, Billy, you're supposed to hang on to the one end. Where you go, where you go, go get it, where you go, where you go, go get it, where you go. Get a little more speed going there, Bill. Look out. There we go. He's probably tired her now. What the heck's this? There you go. All right, fine. Oh, oh, oh. 
Later that day, Bill got into bed, everything fine, and then, oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, we got ourselves all settled. Bill's all said, a lot of mosquitoes, so Bill had kind of zipped himself up there like a sausage roll. And uh, he, you know what, he'd gotten in there a little too quick, and uh, he had neglected to put down one of the key components in any camping trip, the ground sheet. Right, Bill? A little soggy, is it, Bill? <laughs> and not from the inside this time. This is starting to Bill. You didn't put down your ground sheet. That's what I'm showing you. Come on, put that down, you'll be fine. So he doesn't want to go to the sleeping bag there because of the mosquitoes. So besides, he can just do it without. Looks like one of them, you know, the caterpillar in the cocoon. I don't want to see the butterfly that comes out of that one, I'll tell you. Yeah, where you go, Bill. And, and Bill, if you need any help, I'm here for you, buddy. There he goes. All right. I'm here for you. No, well, in my way, you know. There he's all set. Jump into bed, Bill. Where you go. Good night. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So they had their test running of the bulls, right? <laughs> now, you got this guy named Moose, and for good reason, okay? <laughs> and he's chasing all the other men down right down the center of town, right? So. Okay, that's all you really need to know. <laughs> Uncle Red, come on in here. Come on in here, Uncle Red. <laughs> Tell them what happened. Moose does not corner well. <laughs> that's true, because they were chugging along pretty well on the straightaway. And then we hit the sharp curve in the middle of town there. Right in front of the yogurt stand. <laughs> all the way home, I was afraid some health nut was going to start licking me. <laughs> Well, the good news is, you know, that this crazy event of yours is mercifully a lost cause. Oh, no, no. Uh -huh. It's not over till I quit, and I'm not quitting. We're going to do the whole running thing again, only this time we're going to use a lion. A lion? A lion? A lion? Yeah. A lion like what? Like a 10-foot razor fang man-eating lion? Well, sort of. We're going to use the lion from Flinty McClintock's African Lion Safari. Flinty's lion? Yeah. That's a mangy, arthritic, dyspeptic, senile, toothless, half-blind lion, that thing. Is... Actually, I heard it was a deformed pig. That's what I heard. You're going to have to put on a skateboard and wheel it through town. <laughs> Flinty's not going to lend it to you anyway. He gives you that lion, his whole lion safari, just going to be a bunch of snow fences holding back chickens. <laughs> How about that mink ranch outside of town? Oh, yeah, that place with the little wee corrals. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we'll have the running of the minks. Does that say class to you? Oh, yeah. Third. <laughs> this is the repair shop part of the show that we call, if it ain't broke, you're not trying. So Dalton Humphrey's brought something in for us to fix. What'd you bring us there, Dalton? Hey, well, Red, you know, uh, today I was hoping you could uh, fix my tennis racket here. <laughs> Just got that last week. John McEnroe have a garage sale, did he? No, no, no. That's uh, that's brand new, Red. Can wow. you can you fix it? Boy, I don't know, Dalton. Yeah. See, this is a titanium graphite. Oh yeah. Yeah, and th those strings are made from a uh, snow leopard gut. <laughs> you know, it almost looks like it's been bent around a post or something. Yeah, right? yeah. No, no. My wife did that. Did it right around her knee. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Anne Marie's a you know a smallish woman, but boy, when those hormones kick in, she's got a just a power to her, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So did did uh, she break the strings too? No, 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 no. We did that together. Oh. Yeah. Uh, may I? Oh, I sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was this kind of look. Oh yeah. Yeah. See, she just had. Just an impressive overhead smash. Yeah, that just, she just really got all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, um... <laughs> you having problems at home of any kind? Oh, no. No, <laughs> no, no. Oh, no, nothing serious, Red. Uh, you know, we recently had our 20th wedding anniversary. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. Which I forgot. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> Tried to pass off this tennis racket as, a, as an anniversary gift, and <laughs> apparently Anne and Marie uh, isn't a big tennis fan. Well, that's that's that's, that's too bad, Dalton. Yeah. But congratulations on on the 20th anniversary. Well, uh, that's silver, isn't it? You know, I I don't know what it is. Okay. But I'll tell you what it's not. Uh -huh. It's not titanium graphite. That's for sure. <laughs> 
Well, the running of the mink was not an unqualified success. <laughs> Dozens of casualties! <laughs> It was like guys were trampled and stomped and bitten. One woman pulled a muscle laughing so hard. <laughs> you know, uh, Harold, what I couldn't figure out was how come the minks all went up to inside a junior's pants like that? Well, it's because he keeps food in his pockets all the time. <laughs> Those minks just whizzed right up there. Yeah, so did Junior. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, I just, you know, he went crazy, didn't he? Oh, yeah. It became yeah. the running of the junior. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> boy, he was knocking things over oh, and yeah. smashing into people and trampling all over him. Boy, oh boy, I had no idea junior could move so fast. Well, Harold, you know, you get a dozen mink in your shorts and you get the adrenaline. And, uh... <laughs> but you know, I, I, I think people got their money's worth on that. Yeah, tickets were free, so I think so yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> Just a meeting. It's just a meeting. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I yeah. was just, you know, yeah. I was just doing that in case, for your own sake, I'm going downstairs. Yeah. All right. All right. I want to get the mink laughing. Okay. If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And uh, you know, you've always said you'd like to have the experience of the feel of real mink. I want to check with Junior on that. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, you keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> Okay, all rise. Bye. 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 Okay, I got this week's first announcement. Um, it's a, oh, look, it's a, it's a computer for sale. Uh, 22 megabytes with 25 quad, big hard drive, lots of bytes, big output, compatible with most male to male, female to male. I'm sorry, this is a personal ad. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that, I'm, I'm sorry. That, Thank you.